<laughs> For three years now, these front lines have defended a little-known revolution. It's not only ISIS trying to create a new society in the Middle East. In northern Syria, left-wing Kurdish radicals are trying to build a mini-state in an unprecedented political experiment. But this is no caliphate. It's a grassroots take on representative democracy they say is based on equality, pluralism and self-sufficiency. Their enemies say they're an atheistic one-party state with links to terrorism. But they claim they're a model of tolerance for the entire region. Syria's secret revolution has created a place like no other in the Middle East. Welcome to Rojava. The Tigris River marks the border between northern Iraq and a part of Syria the locals call Rojava. In October, filmmaker Mehran Bazorgnia was granted rare access to take this exclusive footage. Crossing from Iraq, this family of Kurdish refugees. The men are running from ISIS death squads. The women potentially from a life of slavery. They say they feel safer on the Syrian side than back at home in Iraqi Kurdistan. As the Syrian regime's authority waned over the past three years, left-wing revolutionaries took full advantage and declared their own mini-state in northern Syria. It's based on three mainly Kurdish enclaves, one near Aleppo, the next around the beleaguered city of Kobane, and here, centered on Karmishli, where we filmed. They've called it Rojava, separate entities with a shared ideology. Over two million people live here, but ISIS forces now menace them all. These refugees are Yazidis. They've come here to Rojava to learn how to fight ISIS, who were persecuting them because of their non-Islamic religion. <laughs> They're being trained by Rojava's army, the so-called People's Protection Units, or YPG. In summer, the Yazidis were threatened with extermination by ISIS, prompting a wave of US bombing raids. But the Rojavan armed forces launched a daring cross-border rescue mission to save them. Commander Khalil is the spokesman for Rojava's army. He sees an important role for their forces in the wider war against ISIS. The new Yazidi recruits will get three weeks of basic training and some light weapons, and they'll then fight alongside the YPG. And this is where they'll end up. On the front lines, in the desert, just a few hundred meters away from ISIS, seen here trying to advance on the strategic town of Jeza.
The additional Yazidi manpower is certainly welcome, for a Java's army lacks modern equipment, unlike ISIS, whose jihadis have looted tons of American-made heavy weapons from captured Iraqi army bases. Instead, the YPG have integrated the ethnic mix of Rojava's population. Kurds, Yazidis, Arabs, Turkmen and Christians, both men and women, all fight shoulder to shoulder here. The Rojavan political project is all being run from this Spartan office. Aldo Khalil lost his left hand fighting for Kurdish guerrillas in Turkey. Nowadays, he's the brains behind the radical social revolution here. And for him, it's about much more than a separate region for Syria's Kurdish population. Rojava beri her tishti modele ki çare seriye el gelu heye. Modele ki gojbo cihane tabi dibe rebaza ki çare seriye go prizgireke in cihane u prizgireke navara milletan u desela darewan de ben çare serkirin. Yani fikreke nu idi şetil de 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 nava rojava de. Uwaki den dama jiyaneke demokratik bir unuşkandin ve bebe alikar Perzgireke in Suriye is jara serbe, Perzgireke in Turkey is jara serbe, Perzgireke in Iraq is jara serbe, Perzgireke in Lebanon is jara serbe, yani nemuneye ki demokratik ili peşe. Her vaha dali vakidin deji em şuha beşek önce Suriye, em nakhwazın Suriye kutubin. But Rojava has been scorned by its neighbors. ISIS jihadists are simply trying to eliminate them especially around Kobane. While the Turkish government has called Rojava a terrorist entity, this is because the dominant party in Rojava has close links to a Turkish Kurdish separatist group called the PKK. The PKK fought an extremely brutal guerrilla war in Turkey. It started in the mid 80s and violence is ongoing. At its peak, there were human rights abuses and killings on both sides. Tens of thousands of civilians lost their lives. The PKK's leader, Abdullah Öcalan, is in prison in Turkey, accused of terrorism offences. He is the political guru for Rojava's leaders, and his new radical egalitarian ideology forms the basis for the Rojavan movement. Critics say Rojava is now dominated by PKK ideologues who don't really want a democratic Syria. It's something their leadership deny. Rivebriye ki shame dar ke rivebriye ki bawriya ib demokrasiye be rivebriye ki go karib khaduri sistema navendi bkhe we chaghe mere kare shame re lehav bke u ve sistema khob rangi ki Camps like this one north of Garmishli house refugees from ISIS attacks. The authorities here say the political system is based on collective agreement via popular local assemblies and grassroots decision making. And you can see the results at mealtimes in the refugee camps. All the food on offer was facilitated by the authorities, but we were told it was 40 local families who'd agreed to organize and take it in turns to cook meals for the refugees. According to their constitution, in each municipality, the top three officers have to come from different ethnicities, and at least one must be a woman. This is unprecedented in the Middle East. Garmishli is the biggest city in Rojava. The separation of church and state here means women can dress as they want, and there are no religious restrictions on public behavior. Although many of the Kurds here are from Muslim backgrounds, Rojava has now become something of a sanctuary for minorities from across Syria and beyond. Hussein converted from Islam to Christianity two years ago. Apostasy is viewed as unforgivable in many parts of the Middle East, and Rojava is probably one of the few places in this region someone like him can live a normal life. Hussein's change of faith 
came about after a traumatic spell in one of Assad's prisons. Hussein's wife, Meskina, worries about the effects of the war on her kids if she stays in Rojava. Before the war, Hussein had invested in these new apartments. But since ISIS attacked, everything's ground to a halt. يعني ترى نما شغل سكني يعني شمنتو نور شمنتو نينا عالم تبجو ترصى ترصي داعش جبهة النصرة عند بشار أسد قم رب مم طابيجي يعني عالم ترصي هري عالمي نما أنا حالك حالك معيشي زحمتها هذي عالم دخوازي بس خوخودي بك يعني عبد الرحمن هامو is the man charged with developing Rojava's new economic model. ام سریده و کی آبوریه کی جوایکی آساس دگرین کو جوایک همو باشتری و آبوریه بوده و همان وقت لسریا آواکرنا کوپراتیفان و لسر کو ام بکانه بن خخا تیرا خواب کن یا اکتفا آزادی آساس بگرین ام آبوریه کیوس آساس دگرین. The authorities have invested in agriculture and light industry. But the economic mainstay remains oil, which is sold on the black market. It's a useful revenue stream, as this mini-state doesn't levy any taxes, and the banking sector is non-existent. More problematic, though, is the attitude of other regional powers. <laughs> و هر چار دوره ما به سیاستی که نزدیک می‌دونم که نهایی لبن انفتاح همه چی به اقتصادیان سیاسیان. Back at the Tigris border crossing, a fact-finding delegation from the European Parliament are arriving. In the front line to greet them is the political strategist Al Dakhalil. He wants to sell the political project to the visiting foreigners. And win friends for Rojava. Kesin terrorist, kesin Rahabi, irishi metkin. Ud khazin metin nevkin. Khazin haramame talam bkin. Khazin diroka me winda bkin. Hager brasti raya gshti ya jihani devletin navne tawi taibati Amerika jid navde. Gbrasil dji Rahabi nel dji terrorin. Gerek beria her tishti. The EU officials have come to look at the plight of refugees. These hospital patients were all injured in the panicked flight from ISIS. This little boy was found crying and alone in the desert. Nobody knew who he was or whether his family were alive. Exposure to the desert sun blinded him in both eyes. We've since learned that that child died from his injuries. But things are tough everywhere here. Rojava is broken into three separate enclaves and they're besieged by ISIS. This is one of the volatile border zones near Iraq. Sheikh Nafas runs Rojava's internal security force, the Asayesh, which are organized as a volunteer militia. <laughs> And true to the bottom-up philosophy at work in Rojava, all these internal security force members are nominated by local village committees, not recruited centrally by the government.
This security man is an ethnic Arab, but he's sporting an Abdul Öcalan badge. The famous Kurdish PKK leader is the ideological inspiration for the whole movement here. And this fighter is a Christian. Sheikh Nafas well knows just how perilous the military situation in Rojava is and how unpredictable the results of foreign military intervention in the region could be. Sheikh Nafas offers to take our cameras on a tour of the front lines. On the way out, two ISIS suspects are brought in. They'd apparently been caught planting a roadside bomb. The guards didn't want us to film them, and we don't know what happened to those men next. Reports have come in that ISIS have launched rockets on the nearby cement works. Leading from the front, Sheikh Nafas insists on having a look for himself. The ISIS front line is only 400 meters away. And the jihadists are a real and lethal threat. ISIS fighters are well equipped and highly motivated when they launch an attack in another sector on the southern city of Hasake. The Rojava military scrambled to respond. Lacking heavy weapons, they've constructed their own homemade tanks out of dustbin lorries. In Hasake city, the situation is critical. It's close quarters street fighting, house to house combat. The Rajavan forces are under extreme pressure and everybody has to fight. Not just the men. These women are fully trained combat troops. It's something unique here and not just born of military necessity. <laughs> The movement's stated commitment to gender equality extends from the home to the front lines. 7,500 women are under arms here. Java forces eventually repulse the ISIS attack and the city is safe, at least for today. <laughs> Back near his HQ, Sheikh Nafas examines some artwork his men have made from spent machine gun bullets. All these come from just one day of fighting. Kurdistan 
Its leaders say Rojava has only survived through a combination of ideology, careful organization, and force of arms. Sheikh Nafas thinks it's now time the world paid proper attention to the views of Kurdish revolutionaries, despite the terrorist label the international community has put on his allies in the Turkish Kurdish PKK. Rojava appears to be something unique in this region and is a sanctuary for all sorts of minorities. But it's under siege and many people aren't sure they want to risk staying. Tens of thousands of Christians live in Rojava as they have done for millennia. This is the main Syriac Orthodox Church in the city of Derek. The community here is terrified of ISIS and what the future might hold. We went with the convert Hussein to a meeting of local Christians. <laughs> While the Christians in this enclave pray for divine intervention, the enemy are quite literally at the gates. Since the filming, Hussein has sent his daughter to Turkey and his eldest son to Europe. And as the nightly barrage of ISIS rockets starts again, out in the desert, Rojava's army is still holding the line. Some people here believe this revolutionary mini-state could be the blueprint for a more tolerant and stable region. But how long can Rojava hold out in the face of such ruthless and determined enemies?